Cool. So uh, welcome to Sierra Nova Comics uh, podcast for the SNC podcast episode six. And today with us, we have Team Morrison. Hey, how's it going? Hey. <laughs> Doing good. Uh, so uh, who are you? Besides, you know, being your name, Shane. <laughs> and uh, what do you do? Uh, well, work-wise, I'm a full-time EMT. I usually tend to work 24-hour shifts. Um, plus side about that is it gives me plenty of time to do other stuff. But uh, I write the, I'm the writer and creator of the comic book series Beast King, which is up to about issue three about right about now. And also I run Crimson Gate Comics, which also publishes Crossers Gate by Travis Martinez, which that is also up to issue three. And so right now things are kind of at a standstill due to me getting a house recently. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of financial drain on that end. I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Um, what is Beast King and Crossers Gate? And like, like, what can you t- tell about them without giving away like any spoilers? So Beast King is like a science fiction action kind of series, which is based in Texas, and it's about a guy named Jake Stevens who, when his mother was pregnant with him, she ge- he was genetically modified and had animal DNA combined with his own DNA. So it gave him, you know, unique abilities and the the power to turn into a powerful beast, which is kind of where the title Beast King comes in, because it turns out there's others like him, though he's supposed to be the perfect being of his kind, whereas the others are more trial and error type versions. And, you know, they'll have like, say, for example, some might have psychotic issues. None of them are able to turn back to human like he can and stuff like that. And pretty much the way I do it is every issue is about 32 pages. And the whole story behind it is when he was a kid, his parents had refused to share any of the research with anybody because they realized how much trouble it could cause. And the company they were working for turned out that they were wanting to use it more for profitable reasons instead of like the furthering, furthering the human race and evolution and whatnot and so because of that they were assassinated when he was a kid right in front of him and so ever since then his uncle had to raise him and train him so one day he could get revenge for his parents and there's kind of a a lot of stuff that goes on in the first two issues on its own issue three only came out like i think a couple months ago so i don't know if it's too soon to be revealing any details on what happened in issue three and whatnot but The way it ends is that it kind of really picks up on the story. And uh, Crosser's Gate is a horror mystery series, which is done in like a black and white manga type style. And it's about a alternate world like our world, but it's twisted, warped and crazy. And what happens is sometimes it'll randomly pull people into that world. So the way the first book starts out, the main character sees that he's being followed and so he goes to run through a door, and that door just so happens to take him to that world. And so pretty much the first issue of that series, he's trying to figure out how to get the hell out of this place, while every time he goes around a corner, there's these creatures called wraiths, which are like mindless killing machines. And they're basically, how do I put it? I'd say the way I would describe it is they're kind of like a very creepy-looking advanced type of zombie <laughs> like they they work more like an, like mindla like animals with a non-stop killer instinct basically so uh-huh. it, it gets pretty crazy and pretty much with each issue it kind of leaves you a little more and more <laughs> confused on what's going on and like you don't really know what exactly is going on and neither does the main character so it's a pretty good series especially for people that love horror type stuff that's me. I like more. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so, do you uh, plan on running any um, crowdfunding like Kickstarter, Indiegogo in the future? Uh, well, let's we'll see. For the previous stuff, I've probably ran about four Kickstarters by now, but I'm hoping to do maybe two or three more this year because I want to get Beast King 4 and Crossers Gate 4 out. But I also want to hurry up and start on my other series called Ungodly Champion, 
which I hope to at least get issue one released on that this year, which is also a story based in Texas. And that actually, that story actually goes side by side with Beast King. Oh, cool. So they're kind of like, it's kind of like each story is one half of one whole story. Very cool. They all like connect their. Yeah, Beast King and Ungodly Champion do. Because there, there will be issues where they meet each other and whatnot. So, um, what is so uh, what, what advice do you have for um, creators uh, getting into Kickstarter, seeing as you've run so many? <laughs> uh, let's see. Networking, obviously. You know, try to get to know people. Because the very first Kickstarter I did, I had to pretty much cancel it because. I at the time didn't really know anybody and honestly I didn't know that there was as many indie creators as there are but uh honest, honestly you need to kind of do a lot of planning and prepare yourself and you know try to set your goal to a reasonable goal because if you've never done a kickstarter before unless you have something that is somehow going to be a huge hit on your first try it's best to not overachieve with your your goal, so that's probably a a good one. But um, try to make your rewards reasonable, and I wouldn't say anything over the top unless you know for sure you can pull it off. Make sure that you can at least break even, and um, always make sure to account for shipping. A lot of people seem to never account for shipping. They just kind of guess instead of doing the research. Google's your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so do you, do you uh, only run on Kickstarter, or do you run on any other platforms like Indiegogo? I usually only do Kickstarter. I've yet to try to do one on Indiegogo. We, uh, when we first started this company, we did an Indiegogo, but we didn't have a following. So like basically everything you just said that you should do, we didn't do. Uh, so yeah. I'm also, yeah, so I like did an Indiegogo, and he's like, "Oh, you should follow this thing." I was like, "Shut up!" So, uh, <laughs> so I was uh, doing an Indiegogo for I don't even like a for the comic that actually is on our Kickstarter now, except the art was not even out yet. We had nothing. Yeah, so I was just like, "Yeah, I'll just get money," but that's not how that works. Yeah, so I always have to make sure that you're at least halfway done with the book. Yeah, I think we just had. Um, uh, yeah, so we had and like maybe one page was stenciled or something. Yeah, but it was from a different artist. Why? <laughs> yeah, than the one we ended up using. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> crazy. Um, so uh, if people have been uh, running Kickstarters and they keep failing, uh, what do you have to? What, um, do you have any advice for them before they throw in the towel? Like, what, when do they know it's? You know, maybe maybe their stuff isn't working, or maybe they're just not running their Kickstarter properly. Oh, if I'm gonna be honest, usually those are the people that, no matter how much advice they're given, they still try to do their own thing, which for stuff like Kickstarter does not work. You want your Kickstarter to look as professional as possible and as informative as possible without overloading with text, if that makes any sense. Yeah. But, uh, like I said, those people, the ones that just keep trying to churn out Kickstarters where, for one, they just don't look professional, and two, they just tend to not be the listening type. You know, kind of like a like a, a writer or an artist that you tell them, hey, your stuff could be so much better if you did this, but instead they just brush it off and keep doing what they were doing. So that's the unfortunate part about that. <laughs> Some people you just, I wouldn't say mm -hmm. are hopeless or a lost cause, but they're, they're kind of their own worst enemy. No, definitely. Yeah. Like we, uh, one of the first pieces of feedback we got for our first print was the, uh, like the lettering needed work. And so that's like the first thing we did for, uh, uh the upgraded release that we're doing now. It's definitely, uh, <laughs> you know, it's good, good to take advice and heed it, <laughs> especially. Oh, yeah. You know, have been successful at it. I know for issue one of Beast King, I got to re-letter that one because that was done over a year ago when I first started, and I was new to lettering and all that stuff. <laughs> so it still needs to be redone. 
Yeah, we, we, we just like didn't get a letter and I have Photoshop, so I uh, yeah. <laughs> it was like that. They're like, oh, the, the bubbles are too big. They're like the lettering is close to the um, bubble lines or whatever. And I was like, yeah, oh, that's right. the most common mistakes. Yeah. So yeah. I asked around and then Travis Gibb like messaged me and said, oh, like you should use my letter that I've used. And I was like, oh, okay. So yeah, I have Jerome that did that. Yeah, I was too cheap to all the so eventually I just kept doing it and doing it until I got better at it. Yeah, that works too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my lettering's improved quite a bit. I wouldn't say it's fantastic, but I'd say it's worth at least charging rates. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what is an obstacle that you had to deal with in like your creating process and how do you like overcome it? Uh honestly, my biggest obstacle is always money. Because there's always some new financial obstacle that comes in the way. <clears throat> but I mean I have usually have plenty of free time. But, like for example, lately I'm having to pick up a ton of overtime to be able to get stuff at home done while also trying to get comic book stuff done. Like, for example, I only just recently was able to pay uh, my illustrator and my inker for the first five pages of Ungodly Champion. And I usually try to only pay before the work is done. So that, yeah. that kind of obviously gets in the way, too. No, it's it's definitely good to uh, get the make the artists happy. You know, you want to you want to keep them uh, wanting to come back and work on your stuff and prioritize your stuff. So it's good to it's good to make sure they get paid first. But it definitely does uh, slow things down a bit. Yeah, it's true. Nothing turns away an artist more than uh, you get paid once the Kickstarter funds. <laughs> <laughs> they got they got bills to pay. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're gonna do like a couple of lightning round questions. It's only like three, and they're like simple. It's just the first thing that comes to your head. Oh, okay. Like little fun things for other people to like learn about you. Um, I don't always do too well with those, but I can try. <laughs> uh, favorite restaurant. Favorite restaurant. <sighs> like I said, <laughs> I don't know if I really have a favorite. I have like multiple restaurants that I really enjoy, but if I had to pick one that I've been kind of really enjoying lately would be Razoo's, which is a, uh, a Cajun re restaurant, but it's like kind of like a place kind of like Chili's or Applebee's where it's like, I guess, higher quality. It's not like fast food. They have like the best fried pickles I've ever had. <laughs> I'm having trouble hearing you. Oh, right now we get now. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it just cuts out yeah. <laughs> for no reason. The mic is like super sensitive. Uh, it happens. Yeah. Uh, favorite holiday. Thanksgiving. Yes. Or <laughs> Christmas. Um. <laughs> uh, favorite indie comic right now. Favorite indie comic. Uh, let's see. I'm a pretty big fan of this. Uh, it's a series called Prometheus. It's not through image or anything like that, because I know that there's a Prometheus. I think that's through image. But uh, it's through a guy on Kickstarter. His name's Ryan. And I, I pretty en I enjoyed that one a lot. Uh, I think there was another one that was uh, pretty even with it, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. Yes, Ryan. <laughs> Just like see you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, that's the lightning round questions. It's pretty easy. Uh, <laughs> so we just got uh, two more questions, and you can oh, shower <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> uh, what do you think that any comic creators need to make them be seen more? Uh, that's probably one of the number one thing that needs to be focused on and honestly it's the fact that none of us seem to be that good at marketing <laughs> and so 
Well, yeah, well, a lot of us need to work on our marketing skills, me included. And that's that's probably everyone's number one weak area. I mean, there are a few of us that are really good at the marketing aspects. Obviously, like uh, Tyler James, he's the guy that runs uh, Comics Launch. Yeah. He's probably a pro at that stuff. Uh, Sean Mack's pretty good at that stuff. But, uh, yeah, the, the number one thing that people need to focus on is their marketing strategies and whatnot. So it's, it's tough to come up with an actual solid marketing strategy based on a comic book because it's already a pretty niche kind of group. So you got to find a way to entice comic book fans, but then a good chunk of them are diehard Marvel only or DC only or and then if they do read indie, they only read image, so it's <laughs> it can be a pain. But with the way things are going lately, it seems like more and more focus seems to be moving towards indies, especially with uh, some of the popular artists and writers and stuff coming from Marvel or DC going straight to Kickstarter, which seems to be a, a trend lately. So hopefully that'll bring more eyes to Kickstarter, which will maybe cause an increase of a fan base for us indie guys. So. How do you feel about coming into uh, you know the indie comic scene? I mean, it might be needed. I mean, there's obviously the paranoia that maybe it'll ruin Kickstarter for the indie guys, but I think it would be better. For them. Yeah, that's that's what I think would happen is that it'll improve things for us. Because like I said, it'll cause an increase of Kickstarter backers. And when someone goes to back one of their projects, it may show, it'll obviously show some of our stuff. And it's like a recommended. You may also like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's, yeah. that's really all I can say on that. <laughs> well, I'm going to say about that. Is, is there any um, uh, particular mainstream artists that have been coming into the indie scene that you like? that uh you know that you're following uh i mean i'm not totally sure because unfortunately the only ones i ever hear about are the ones like uh for example the guy i forget his name the guy that does cyber frog like i only ever hear about the bad ones where it's been like a year and they've yet to produce their single issue because i guess these pros think oh this must be super easy and then even though they work they worked for like Marvel and DC and all that. So you would think that they would know that it's a difficult process, but apparently even they're learning the hard way that it's not easy. Well, it's, it's like the regular business. A lot of people think that uh, just because you're a technician, like just because you're a baker, you think you can own a bakery. There's so much more to a bakery than just baking. Oh yeah. So, yeah. With the a, lot, a lot of stuff involved in business. <laughs> oh yeah. Like you got to build relationships, you got to do the marketing stuff, which we all seem to lack. You got to learn prices and shipping and all this other stuff. You just got to learn. There's just a lot to learn. Yeah. So, I mean, the business. Write a story and then it's going to do a comic, and then now I just do the marketing. So that's why like easier. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, definitely been a fun little uh, adventure, uh, you know, especially since we, you know, we have our, our digital publishing uh, that we do. So it's like having to figure out how to how to get that online, how to, you know, connect, connect all the all the way from just doing the business or running a business and then connecting that with marketing comics has been very, <laughs> very fun venture to travel on. <laughs> you got to learn how to get people to care. I mean, that's the honest truth, is, which is, can be hard sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it's funny. I got to do it once in a reference. No, I feel like I have a bunch of books back here. Um, one thing I'd totally recommend, this little book, it's super tiny, it, but it's by Seth Godin, like the godfather of marketing. And uh, it's it's called Tribes, obviously. And the whole point is about building a tribe. And it's off that um, that concept of like the thousand true fans, you know, having having people that will buy anything you put out there and only focusing on them because too many people are like, oh, our comic book is for everybody. It's like if your comic book is for everybody, then nobody wants it. Like <laughs> it's got to be something that 
you know, some people are going to hate, some people are going to love, and some people are going to be indifferent on, and you got to, you know, you got to know that. Yeah, you got to build a quality. And like you said, if it's for everybody, then nobody's going to want it because it's not going to be unique to them. It's just going to be like any and other, kind of like the superhero genre, especially in indie comics. People are like, check out my unique superhero, and it's you see it, and it just looks like a knockoff of some other famous superhero. Or there's just nothing unique about the character whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of like what I'm trying to obtain in our comic. Uh, some are superhero, and then some, and it goes into horror, and there's like a bunch of genres that we're going into. But uh, it starts out at like a superhero genre, and it focuses a lot on like how Spider Man, like, his, he's got like 99 problems, but like being Spider Man isn't one. Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically like that. So I just want people to feel more of a connection with people, like the characters in my stories, because um, when someone like dies, I want someone to actually feel hurt when they die. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't pull a Marvel and DC where they come back to life, but um... no, we actually have a strict rule for our universe that we don't do that. Like once you stay dead, you're dead. <laughs> Yeah, that's how it should be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, we're being resuscitated or something. Yeah, yeah, there's like very few exceptions we have, but they're pre-planned exceptions, and they're not. And like, it's not like a oh, there's some other magical way that we just invented for the sake of bringing this character back. It's like premeditated how it would happen. And we don't have time travel because I am very confused about time travel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the worst subjects you can have in is time travel. Like, because uh, one of our friends um, is making a comic slowly when he can, and it's like a speedster kind of character. And I'm like, all right, but you can't be like the Flash. And he's like, what? And I was like, you can't have time travel. So you have to figure something else out to make it. So we figured out something, but it's like very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, speedsters are kind of, it's one of those type of characters that everything for has already been done over and over. <laughs> yeah. Well, honestly, heard it the same way. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, that's why it's kind of like, uh, you know, you got to kind of have to go after the Spider-Man mentality where it's like, yes, the, the powers are cool, but the character development is much more prevalent. Like, that's the thing that you need to focus on. Yeah. Because you can't really focus on, oh, man, he ran so fast that he went back in time or into the future. So that's been done over and over and over. Yeah, exactly. Have you, watched, uh, have you ever seen the show yet, The Boys? The what? The Boys. I have not watched it because I think it's on Amazon and I don't have it. Uh, yeah, my, <laughs> friend, like, it uh, <laughs> my friend um, has it or whatever. He has like a free or a prime or something. So he let me watch it. Um, one of the scenes, there's a speedster character, and as the whole premise around the show is like the person that created that comic is against superheroes. And one of the scenes is a speedster runs into a person because he can't stop running and kills him. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, that's different. That's literally how it all starts. And then yeah, that's like Superman. Like when Superman flies around and grabs somebody out of the sky, it's like their neck will break. Like, what, <laughs> what are you talking about? You can just throw somebody six hundred feet in the air and not get whiplash. Like, you're out of your mind. Oh uh, yeah, like uh, that movie Hancock. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. He throws that kid up in the air. With this much arm motion, that kid would have imploded on himself. Like. Oh my god. That's why uh when Spider Man two came out, my girlfriend had no idea like what was about to happen. Uh, she watched it at some point, like it was on Hulu or whatever, and uh she, when Stacy's like falling and then her neck snaps because he tries to catch her. Yeah, and, uh, it's about to gonna happen. So I'm just like looking at her and she's like, Oh, yeah, she won't he'll like save her. Like, okay, you keep thinking that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, 
you didn't think you would get like a half hour and we got to like 25 minutes so that that's pretty good <laughs> yeah, it is <laughs> yeah but definitely uh thanks for joining us and uh hope you enjoyed chatting with us oh yeah that was no problem i enjoyed it <laughs> uh we're probably gonna do like a crowdfunding like episode just about crowdfunding but we have to get like everybody in order because there's a lot of people that are that want to be part of that yeah yeah so if you want to do that then i'll add you to the list for that and yeah. we'll go from there yeah, yeah make, cool. make, make sure message me about it and let me know more about it. Yeah. yeah definitely yeah we'll keep you on for a second but uh we're gonna end the uh end the stream right here <laughs>